I'm Steve Jeffy, and I'd like to welcome you to Jeffy's Entertainment Museum. Oh, welcome to Guys in a Comic Book. How are you guys doing today? Hi, I'm Michael. I'm Zach. And today we're going to talk about some of our favorite books and favorite writers. Um, as we go let's, through. Let's be adult about this. Oh, we're going to be adult about yes. this. Yes. Right, well then. How do you like that segue? That's a, look at it. Smooth. That was my ZZ Top Smooth. All right, well, if we're going to be adult yes. about this, I'll start with the two writers that I want to spotlight. Okay. Today. First one is going to be Mr. Brian K. Vaughn. Adult. Adult, extremely adult. Stuff like Why the Last Man, one of my favorite complete thoughts in comics. It's an amazing ten volumes that are out there now. They have them all in five hardbacks. They're releasing these bigger, thicker volumes. They're going to release five of them. It's an amazing story about the last man on Earth. Everything with a Y chromosome he dies. The last man. Last man. I wonder how he came up with that title. I have no okay, idea. Okay, I'm sorry. But no, it's a, <laughs> it's, a, it's a very simple story about a man and his monkey. Oh, absolutely. Uh, it's and touching. It's very touching. As Stephen King says... About you? Not about me. Oh, okay. I, I wish I was yours, because uh, I'd be, you know, much, much thinner. Much more yes. attractive. Yes. But, and um, have a monkey. And have a monkey. Because how cool is that? Oh my god, just walking around with a monkey. Yeah. Oh. Uh, can we get a monkey? We cannot get a monkey. I, a trained monkey? I've tried. And you're as close to a trained monkey as I can get. Ook, ook, ook. <laughs> okay. Um, but no, I love this series, and as you can see, Stephen King says it best. The best graphic novel I've ever read. And that's pretty much, and he's gonna, oh, and there he goes. I'm doing the monkey thing. There he that's goes. Okay. That's all right. Um, <laughs> But the art in it is gorgeous. You have uh, Pierre Guerrero does a fantastic job actually doing very comic book style. The art pops. It's, again, adult story meant for, you know, 17 or older. The end of this book is heartbreaking to the point to where as I was reading it, and I, I picked it up in trade after it was complete, I'm reading the last volume. There's a moment that happens in it. I shut the book, and I'm on vacation at my sister's house. I shut the book. And I wing it <laughs> across the room because I just don't want any more of it at that moment. I can't handle it. Just you can't handle the end. I really couldn't. It, okay. it, it just that's destroyed my me. Thing. <laughs> now that's one of his. There's also his Swamp Thing stuff, which is very dark. Mm. Um, very. I, I almost want to say Alan Mori, but not really because it deals more with his daughter than anything else. Still very good. Still worth picking up. One of his better. Mm -hmm. You can everything he does tends to be a little adult. I want to get back to to, to well. Since you said Alan Mori, and I, I didn't think to pull it out, but we do have it. So just imagine that I'm holding up the Alan Moore Swamp thing. I'm gonna, I'm look at this cover. Look, this right look at this cover. It's scary. No, but Alan Moore's run on Swamp Thing. Um, like I said, the, the Strain is the scariest TV show that I've read. There is issue, I want to say issue 29 of Swamp Thing, that is the single scariest issue of a comic that I've ever read. Yeah, before. you've told me and that. I, and I, I, I never say that, but there are, it's just creeped me out, and it still creeps me out to this day. But we are talking about Alan Moore, nope. who's great. We're talking about Brian K. Vaughn, and, 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 and I have a, I have a, I'll, I'll let you That was my Blues Crew, no, Blues, well blues Clues little tribute there. Woohoo! All right. Saga. Okay, Saga. Romeo and Juliet, never read it in school, never wanted to read it in school. Sorry, teachers. <sighs> I know. It just the language got me mixed up. Um, but this is kind of like that. This is Romeo and Juliet, but imagine it takes place in space. Okay. Now imagine it takes place on two different planets, and the lovers get together from two different planets and mm -hmm. cross level eight. Ba basically, the, the, the two the oh, we're two warring here. That's, factions. That's, yes. The two warring yes. factions. Wait, we can't do they're that. From Is the that? opposite side. Okay. I, I think that's good. No, okay. it's, it's the other. It's, okay. it's, it's, it's the other one. That's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Thank you. Uh, but no, what's great about this book Little is black bar. Yeah, that's exactly. <laughs> what's great about this book is. It's written very true to form. As much as it's aliens and it's people and it's different creatures, it feels very human. Mm -hmm. Everything about the characters, you don't sit there and go, oh, that's an alien. Oh, that's this alien. You just, you feel like these are people that are in the, in a universe. And you don't question any of the art decisions. You don't question the way they're doing it. You just kind of get back and you feel a connection with these characters as and, they go through a And lot a of lot of it is written from the, the viewpoint of their daughter. Who's who? Their their baby daughter who's born mm -hmm. from like day one. I forget whether it even starts before day one. No, it's, 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 it's it, there's a line but. in there that I can can't say in public access, but it's basically her birth, and that's yes. the beginning of the book. Yes, and it, oh, so good, so good. The, and since we are talking about Brian K. Vaughan, yep. I do have three more books I'll get to, and okay. then we'll go ahead and I'll let you. It's talk. all about you, Zach. It's all about me. <laughs> 
I run this. Okay. Um, Brian yeah, Cable. That's great. No, that's the, the other one I want to talk about um, from his Vertigo line is going to be Ex Machina. It's a fantastic story. Bit of a political thriller, more so than anything else he's done. It's the story of imagine a guy gets uh, gets superpowers over mm-hmm. technology, and he stops one of the he stops the second plane from crashing into the World Trade Center, and he becomes the mayor of New York. And it's about it's this story talking about how he got his powers mm-hmm. and also the political intrigue in dealing with being the mayor of New York after the yeah. way the world changed on 9-11. And I'm not a big politics guy, but boy, does this just take that, uh, the writing of, of the whole political aspect of things uh, and just write it so darn well. I always compare it to, it is, imagine if you can, Superman meets the West Wing. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, and that's mm-hmm. very much yeah. where this book kind of, where it holds its uh, canon. And again, that's a favorite. That's, this is a favorite. favorite of everyone in the museum, <laughs> my wife included. I can give it to kids and they can read it. That's it's great thing. for kids. We've talked so much about Brian K. Vaughan's adult stuff. We've left adult territory, haven't yes. we? Now we're into kids. And yeah. this is The Runaways. Yes. This is an amazing story. Brian K. Vaughan, when he was working at Marvel, they gave him the chance to go create some characters. So he created The Runaways. They are the children of supervillains. In the beginning of the book, they have no idea what their parents do. They just know their parents or something. And they all have special abilities and different meanings and different ways to go through. And it's basically a story of growing up. And that's what's the best thing about it is that, yes, it has superpowers in it. Yes, you have good trying to overcome evil. Yes, you have some of the more controlled, the, the more deeper themes of is it nurture versus nature when it comes to good versus bad. But at the end of the day, it's a story about a bunch of kids trying to find their place in the world and trying to find out if they're going to be their parents or if they're going to make their own world. And, and it's and just... All the characters are so darn relatable, to mm-hmm. You'll see yourself in, in one of them, if not bits and pieces of all of them. Exactly. So, I mean, this is a fantastic book. It says Teen Plus, but in all honesty, most Teen Plus means about PG-13 or a little lower. I just... I Whenever kids come in and they're looking for something to read and their parents are... Uh, they understand that. I always try to hand this to them because it's just such a well done series. Ooh, me next, me next. Okay. And it's similar. In a roundabout way, that was about kids uh, of super villains. Mm-hmm. This next book that I picked is about the kids of one sort of, not exactly a superhero, but imagine James Bond, okay? He gets around. Just, just a little bit. A little bit. Every single movie, um, how many people do you think he sleeps At with? least two. At least two. In the good old days, it used to be 19, 20, yeah. 20, 25. The, the number just... Cr- it just would just, just escalate it. She would... Shut. Yeah. They like would show up, market. and they would show up, and then they would just be part yes. of that. Yes, yes. Now... This takes place a, a few years later after a James Bond type character has sort of retired and all of a sudden all his kids are out there. Okay. Now, all the women that he's sort of slept with have had these kids and okay. they've all got their own individual talents not knowing who their dad was right. but sort of that sort of thing. So a government group gathers them together and it's called the Illegitimates. Yeah, I know. It's called the Illegitimates, and and it's it's wonderful. It's 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 written by um, one of the guys who does uh, uh, Saturday Night Live, Taron Killen. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, very 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 funny comedic actor. Also had a very cool part in Twelve Years a Slave. Yep. So, but a very talented man. And this is this is basically his, as he said to us in, um, at one of the panels mm-hmm. he was on. He loves comics. He's loved comics as long as long as he could. And they gave him a chance to write a book, and they said, "Do what you want." He went. This is what I want to do. And this is kind of the love child it was born from, no pun intended. Yeah, I like that. And it's cool to go ahead and hear him talk about, as a fan, being able to go through this experience of writing your comic book. So I, I like it as well, and I enjoy the fact that they that IDW gave him a chance to kind of do whatever he wanted to do. I'm going to hit one more Brian K. Vaughn book. Please do. And then I have another writer I really want to talk about. No. All right? Okay, yes. Brian K. Vaughn's Doctor Strange book, The Oath. I love this book because of how simplistic it is. It's imagine, if you will, Doctor Strange is running around, he gets shot. And then throughout the entire book, he's floating around in in spirit Doctor Strange form, trying to solve his murder. It's very, very cool. Again, Brian K. Vaughn's smart writing. The art in it by, I forget who is the artist on it. It is Martin. That that guy. That guy. guy. Some guy. The artist is the artist. But as you can see, the art in it is very well done. has that spooky feel on it. Mm -hmm. And... I would love, because we've been told we're getting a Doc Strange movie, I would love this to be the Doc Strange movie. 
I would love for them just to accept the fact that we're all going to accept he's Sorcerer Supreme, he's already in this world, and just adapt this volume, because it would be a fantastic Now, story. if you are, we talked a little bit about Constantine. Mm -hmm. um, Constantine has little references to other characters in the Marvel Universe, and one of them in one of his rooms that he was going through, mm -hmm. uh, he found some things from Doctor Strange. Oh, no, you, oh, you mean Doctor Fate. Fate. Doctor Fate? You got them confused. I do that. It's okay. I'm a confused guy sometimes. But no, I, I, it's very cool what you're talking about. In the show, like, there's the one where he goes, and there's Dr. Fate's helmet, who's basically a Doctor Strange-like figure in the okay. DC character universe. Saved. Saved. That's what I do. Sweet. Okay. Right. Now, what do you have right here? Cause this I is was a... chewing this over. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Chew. Great, great story. Wonderful. Uh, like I said before, I love art. And the reason why this book is so much fun, besides the great writing by John Lehman and the amazing art by Rob Gilroy, is uh, that every single panel has, has something going on in the background. Every sign is meant to be funny. Everything has graffiti. There are little tiny jokes running throughout the entire thing. It's basically the story of this detective, Tony Chu, and all the people, or, or a lot of the people in Chu, the, this book, have special powers. Tony's special power is that he can eat something and see the history of it. And being that he is a police investigator and usually a murder investigator, when he has to figure out who killed someone, he has to take a part of the dead body, eat it, and then he can see where they came from and, and, and what they were doing and what happened to them. Now, the other thing you're missing. Delicious. The, the, the kitschiest part of this book that you are missing mm -hmm, is mm -hmm. that in this universe, the avian flu killed Hundreds of millions of people. Yes. So now, where chicken is outlawed. Mm -hmm, so you're mm -hmm. in a world where chicken cannot be consumed. Evil. It's evil. And the FDA is the biggest governing body on the face of the planet when it comes to rules. But who is the most super kick-ass character in this book? El Pollo. El Pollo. He is this robotic chicken uh, that, that just... Secret agent. Secret agent, like, like, makes James Bond look like nothing. When this chicken goes in to the most dangerous situations in the world and saves the world over and over and over again through his just chicken awesomeness. Chicken awesomeness. He, well is, he is the most BA of the BA yes. chickens. Alright, well, Yours. my next series of books, and I apologize because I keep going on a tangent we're going to talk about, is a writer named Matt Fraction. Ah. Matt Fraction is one of my favorite writers because of the, of the way he approaches his storytelling and also the way that he approaches just wanting to write comics. Yep, yep, yep. The first one we're going to talk about is his most recent series that he's done, Ooh. and it is Sex Criminals. Now again, Shut just... your mouth. Okay. This was actually one of Time Magazine's comics of the year hmm. when it was released, so that's a big thing for Time Magazine to recognize this and go, this book is worthwhile. The other thing that's cool about this is that you have a new artist, Chip Zdarsky, who's been done other stuff, but this is his big coming out party. No pun intended yet again. <laughs> and what's great about this series is that it feels natural. You're talking about these two people that when they go ahead and they get together, um, time stops. Chicka bow, chicka bow, bow, if and, you know what I mean. Yeah, time stops. And they can go ahead and do whatever they want in this world. And it's about these two people who have for their entire life have been the only people they thought could do this, they now get together and realize they're not the only ones. And it's a very cool building of this yep. universe and this idea of what does it mean to be an adult? What does it mean to go forward and grow up in life? And what does it mean to have this type of power without any of the responsibility that normally comes with it? And please, please, please don't be turned off by the Sex Criminals title. Mm -hmm. It is wonderfully written. It is beautifully drawn. It is... It, this was one of those books that I think you also gave me, and I devoured it in in like twenty minutes and went. So this was amazing. Yeah. Yes, so, so good. There's a lot of that. Is there yes. more with this? So that's the only adult thing we're going to talk okay. about with him. The rest of his stuff okay. is all superhero stuff. Yeah. And we'll talk about his event that he did first, which is Fear itself. Mm -hmm. Now this is some people are going to love it. Some Fear itself, like this guy's back. <laughs> Okay, just kidding. Yeah, sorry. He scares you. Me, I just I get hungry all of a sudden. It just scares me. Um, but I want to talk about this because this is an amazing, this is a very fun story written by Matt Fraction about basically the world goes into disheveled. Fear strikes the world and goes all over the place. 
and there's no explanation for it. Massive shipping of pants? Yes. Okay. Tons of shipping You really pants. have to be careful when you say that. Yes, you have to enunciate okay. everything. Yes. But what's great about the book is that it starts out with this mass hysteria going on. Steve Rogers is the head of S.H.I.E.L.D. and they're trying to figure out what's going on. Out of nowhere, seven hammers fall to Earth, much like Thor's hammers, with the exception of the fact that these hammers are actually possessed with other entities of fear. Different things in different versions. And you have so all people these... are getting hammered all over. Yes, and you okay. have heroes and villains alike getting these hammers. The Thing gets a hammer. Um, you have the Hulk get a hammer. There's a cool scene where the Thing and the Hulk are fighting Thor. You have the Absorbing Man gets a hammer. The Juggernaut gets a hammer. And you have all these people running around this world just causing this mass destruction and causing as much fear as possible. And it's... Again, it's one of those series that's either going to be love it or hate it. You're not going to, it's, there is no middle ground with this. I enjoyed this and I enjoyed the storytelling in it because of the fact that as someone that's not the biggest Thor fan, this was a great way to go ahead and kind of get into the mythology and the different things that comes with Thor. So nice. I highly suggest this volume. I'm also going to go ahead and bring this up because this intersects with that and also is one of my favorite. You said books. sex. Intersect. Oh, sorry. See, again, enunciation, that's the problem. <laughs> The Invincible Iron Man by Matt Fraction. Now, this series is complete. This is the last, the most, re the volume before the most recent one. Mm -hmm. Oh, I forget the volume number. But this is a brilliantly, Zero. brilliantly written story. I don't think it's here. <laughs> okay, because so, yeah, that's one. So oh, yeah. I just thought I'd throw in zero as I the see, one before that. I see what you did. There. I hate math. New math confuses me. Math is no fun yes. for anybody. Um, except for those that are in school. <laughs> Stay in school. Kids. Um, but. I enjoy this series so much because, it, it first off, it bends through so many different events in Marvel. It goes through the Dark Reign stuff where Norman Osborn's the, bat, the head of Hammer. It goes through Fear Itself. It goes through, I think there's another, another event it goes through. Mm -hmm. But it still maintains its ability to tell its story, which is the Tony, story of Tony Stark trying to figure out what he's going to do next. You have Tony Stark at the beginning. This is the head of S.H.I.E.L.D. And then after this volume, he's no longer the head of S.H.I.E.L.D. Secret Invasion has happened, he has been taken out, he has been blamed for everything, and he is now running from Norman Osborn, erasing his brain, going to lesser and lesser I armor. That happens. I, I have to do it twice a day <laughs> just to keep going with all this <laughs> stuff. But you have him going around, erasing his brain, becoming slower and slower. And then after that run is done, you have him trying to rebuild himself and figure out what's my next step. How am I going to go ahead and change the world for the better after what I tried to do didn't work. And this is an amazing volume. There are twists and turns throughout it. I highly suggest it, even if you're not an Iron Man fan, this series will make you a fan of Matt Fraction. And also, just a quick note, Salvatore the Rock's art just shines through all of this. His ex facial expressions with Tony, the way he just sells Tony and Pepper, and the entire in infrastructure as a whole. Just awesome. Now, I have a couple more oh, I want to get to. <laughs> what else do you have? Ah, I'm I'm down to like I think my last two unless we take a break and I can reload okay. here. But uh, um, I love like I said before coffee table books. Yes. I my house my movers and my last move after they were done said we don't care how much you pay us we are never moving you again. <laughs> Every single box weighed 300 400 pounds and the boxes were only this big because they were all these giant volumes. Wait, that didn't thunk enough. There it Please, is. There, that's that, the thunk. That's the, that's the used car. That's that the we car. Wanted to. Yes. Yeah. Now. Vanna White. It again. I'll, 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 oh, tell, I'll Vanna White this way. You I mean, beautiful covers. But not only beautiful covers, I have made uh, no, no qualms about saying, I'm a Batman fan. I'm a Batman fan. But this stuff, this was one of the best books. It's called A Visual History of Batman. It covers 75 years of Batman. But not only Batman, and that's why I loved it. I would, um, I, they've had other books like this um, where they tried to encapsulate uh, you know, the whole history of Batman. But this one went so much more further and in-depth than other things. It not only covered year by year and month by month, uh, the Batman story, but not just Batman. It went off on, on all the tangents of if it had to do with other characters that came into and out of Batman's world, it brought those into that. And it just does a stunning job of, of as you read it from, from the older stuff, if you're a fan of the older stuff, I happen to kind of like the newer stuff, but just beautiful artwork, 
wonderful covers, stories about each issues. It's like well put together too. And, and the thing that I, I like the best is I've gotten, like I said, a couple of these books and when you try to figure out who does what, like you go, oh, that's a really neat you know, issue. I wonder who did it. This inside, when it's telling you about it, tells the artist and the writer. And it just, I love a book that gives credit to where credit is due. And, and, and it lets you, it gives you the ability to go, okay, I really like this guy, or that guy's art is really neat, or I really like this book, and then follow it around. And it gives you something that a lot of other places don't, a super nice index. And that's of all the authors and all like the that. characters. You really, really need it. But beautiful, beautiful book. Um, and we'll get back to you for one, because I have another coffee table book here. Okay. Okay. I will, I'll okay. take Sorry. I'll, that's all right. Love doing that. Well, that, that's, yeah. that sounds so full. All right. I have two more Matt Fraction books. We'll save my one of the cool ones for last. Okay. This is actually not the volume that he did. But not I the wanna, cool one. Not the cool <laughs> one. But I want to talk about his book that he did. It was with Ed Brubaker. Mm -hmm. It's The Immortal Iron Fist. It's an amazing book just because of the fact that much like you see with a lot of books, the reason that I dig them is because they're different than your normal comic book. His Immortal Iron Fist was basically a chop suey action movie. It was Iron Fist running around the city, you know, kicking butt, being mm -hmm. the being the BA that he is. And also we got a lot of background dealing with how he became the Iron Fist and dealing with the Sacred City and dealing with all this mythology and different things that are really built into the Iron Fist character that they don't get to expound upon too much because he's normally running around with Luke Cage as the heroes for hire. It's an amazing, amazing book. It's very well done. Again, this is now, I love being wrong, <laughs> which is why I opened my mouth before I check my facts. Like a lawyer, know the answer to the question before you ask. But I'm going to ignore my own advice and go, isn't that they're, they're doing a TV show on that too? That's Isn't that actually, one of the characters? That's one of the other ones. <laughs> Go me. Well five done. Five. Thank you. Yes, the reason this is one of the, again, I hope they steal <laughs> a lot from, from that run, but that is one of the characters in the Marvel in the uh, Marvel Netflix universe that <laughs> they're doing. Because it's Daredevil, Jessica Jones, Luke Cage, and Iron Fist. Then they're all getting together for a Defenders series. But I hope they steal a lot of what Brubaker and Fraction did in that series because of how well written it is and how entertaining it is. And that's the biggest thing is that you need to entertain with some of these characters because of the fact that you can get lost in the mythology a little bit and you can kind of get lost in whether or not it's well done or everything. If they just try to keep stuff and facts on you, they broke up the pacing beautifully. I love the series. And it's one of the ones that if anyone is a... If they come in wearing a Bruce Lee shirt, I try to get this in their hand because they'll be right and love it. It'll be right in their wheelhouse. I, what is your last Well, you know, what, you, you know what I was thinking the whole time you were talking there? What? How great I am. I was thinking how great I am because my mom always said reading comic books would rot your brain, and I just proved her wrong. You By really remembering did. that one fact. I remembered a fact. There's a fact in here. That's right. That shows. We're not completely empty-headed. Not yet. One fact. <laughs> okay, one more book. All right, wait, wait. There it is. There it is. Okay. Um, one of my favorite Batman books that has come out come out recently was by called Hush, and it featured the artwork who also uh, the same artist who's featured in this. I mean, just gorgeous, beautiful stuff. And and his name is Jim Lee. Now, what is this volume? Because you're talking about Hush, but what is it yes. that you have in your hands? This one is a little bit older. Frank Miller wrote this. Frank Miller has, has, has oftentimes taken a look at Batman, really gotten inside his head, and, and taken a viewpoint that not many others have. Uh, in this, he sort of almost took it to an extreme in that Batman is not a nice guy. I mean, we already know that, that Bruce Wayne, Wayne's an okay guy and that Batman is a law-abiding citizen and tries to do right by everybody. In this, he's not. Um, he is mean and foul and rude and angry and focused. It's about what he wants and no one else. Yes. He is on a mission and nothing will stop him. When um, uh, Robin here uh, loses his parents in a tragic accident... He doesn't look at it at Robin and go, oh, poor kid. He goes, I can relate. I went through the same thing, and I'm going to turn this kid into my warrior. And I'm going to take him. I'm basically almost going to kidnap him, hold him against his thing, train him to be like me. And, and it's just a phenomenal story. And the thing I love best about this, this book, besides, like I said, gorgeous artwork, um, the colors just sort of jump, is at one point in time, 
when he's first kidnapped Robin and Robin's heading back in the Batmobile and they head into the Batcave. This is how Jim Lee portrayed the Batcave. You're turning your pages, you're reading, they're entering the Batcave, and then you get to this. Oh, I'm going to stand up here. Oh, wait, no, I'm going to sit down because if I stand up, I'm going to like, tell you what, like, I will go ahead yes. and help unfurl the splash page. And it just keeps going. And you get the effect when you're looking at this just like, you know, Robin must have or anyone might have when they suddenly go into a cave and see this. With all of this. You're stunned. And it's just the impact of reading this and seeing this art and, and the story is just stunning. This has one of my favorite moments in any of the Batman books, and it's the one part, and it, it, it really kind of shows what you're talking about, how Batman is not a nice guy, and that is the part with the Green Lantern, mm -hmm. where they're having a meeting, because the Justice League exists in this, they're not what we know them as now, but the Justice League exists in this, and there's a moment where Hal Jordan gets to Batman and says, we have to have a talk, meet me here. So they go ahead, and, and if you could find the page, just because uh, I want to do it, I okay. want to kind of show it off, because it... Is, what, the, is this the, 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 the colored page? Yes, the colored page. Okay, gosh. I think it's a little further this way. <laughs> yeah. so it's a little more That's, towards the end. Oh, towards the end. Oh, there we are. There Thank it is. So, in this, the reveal? Yeah, in this book, when they have the meeting, Bruce makes a decision along with Robin to go ahead and play on Green Lantern's one weakness. And that is... Yellow. The color yellow. So they have a meeting in which Batman and Robin are painted in yellow... They are in the middle of a room that is completely burnt bright yellow. And my favorite thing is he asks them, are you a little thirsty? Would you like some lemonade? So it just keeps the consistent thought of making everything yellow. And it it's just a cool way that they went ahead and did that and played about that. And again, it really escalates how much of a teabag, pardon my French, <laughs> this Batman is and this Bruce is. But I also love that because right after that, there's that turning point mm -hmm. after mm -hmm. what happens with Dick. And it really kind of shows the evolution of the character past that after having a ward. Great story. Now, the last thing I'm going to talk about is the last Matt Fraction book. Mm -hmm. And it is also, unfortunately, his last Marvel book as of now. Now, the book ends at issue 22. So it's going to be four volumes, and I hope they collect it in an omnibus because it's worth sitting down and reading. This was another one you gave me. I love my job when, when, when people go, read this. And, and I go, oh, okay, I'm going to read a comic book. And then I read it, and it's great. And that is Matt Fraction's Hawkeye. Yep. Once Hawkeye was so popular after everything going on in the Avengers movie, they decided to give him a series, and they gave Matt Fraction the chance to do it. They also gave it to David Aja, who's the artist. He was also the same artist that worked with Fraction on the uh, Iron Fist series. Mm -hmm. And this book is very deconstructed. At no point in time does it ever feel like a superhero mm. book. It always feels like an independent book or yeah. something you get from Image or any of the other weird, kitschy companies. And again, the art is not for everyone, but the building of the book is for everyone. And the way that they do panels and it goes through panels and they tell the story, just stellar. And I'm sad to see him go Although I'm excited for what they're doing in May, where they're relaunching the book with uh, Jeff Lamar, Love Lemire doing it? his first Marvel book. It's just, I'm excited for where they're going with that character, but I'm sad to see that series leave. You know what also makes me sad? Is it time? It's, well, puppies crying makes me sad. But that's beside the point. What also makes me sad is, yes, it's time. I was having so much fun. I know, but we'll be back. We will be back. I hope so. We'll be back. We'll talk about other stuff. There's cosplay I want to talk about. Mm -hmm. We have some people here in the museum that do amazing cosplay. And I can't wait to get a chance to speak with her and some of the other people that she knows about cosplay. So I want to thank you guys very much for tuning in and joining us today. It's been very fun. Thank you for allowing us just to kind of run through our favorite books. My name is Zach. I'm Michael. And this is Two Guys with a Comic Book. Y'all have a great time. We'll see you next week. Thanks. Son of a gun!